Do you remember a while ago when the Biden administration <laughs> went full ministry of, to, of truth and tried to hire this freak job, Nina Jankowicz, to determine what was real and what wasn't real? And then it took five seconds to look into this lady to figure out she's just a card-carrying communist nut job. But then, of course, there was so much outrage, she went away. And we're all thinking to ourselves, oh, nice, it went away. Eh. <laughs> I'm not sure it went away. Intercept has a fascinating piece out there now, unsurprising, about DHS, FBI working with social media to make sure only the truth gets out there. The truth about things like COVID, Hunter Biden's laptop, election integrity. You know, they're very reliable on all these things. Joining me now, my friend Liz Wheeler of the great Liz Wheeler Show. Liz, uh, I'd be lying if I said I was shocked by the article. I always figured they were going anyway. Oh, well, certainly. They disbanded the disinformation governance board or whatever they called it um, because of the backlash. They didn't want they didn't want that attention, that spotlight. But we all knew that they weren't going to stop the agenda of that board. Here's the thing. This this document or these series of documents that the Intercept obtained are extremely disturbing. The most disturbing of all is the Department of Homeland Security memorandum that details what their agenda is, what their goals are for the next couple of years. The Department of Homeland Security was concerned in 2002 following the 9-11 terrorist attacks and the mandate for the Department of Homeland Security was to fight the war on terror. It was to fight, well, threats to our homeland that came from abroad. The war on terror now has largely been wound down. Perhaps the end of it was the botched withdrawal from of U.S. troops from Afghanistan. But the Department of Homeland Security is not being disbanded even though its original mandate has ended. Instead, they are retooling their mission and their new mission is to focus on quote unquote threats to homeland security that happen domestically. But here's the thing, Jesse, here's the thing. The last couple of years, the left has tried to tell us that the definition of speech, when it's your speech and my speech, is actual literal violence. It's not sticks and stones may, you know, break my bones, but words will never hurt me. No, no. They say that your speech is actual violence. So the Department of Homeland Security in this new mission statement for what they're going to do in the next couple of years, they've taken this a step further. They're saying not only is your speech actual violence, violence, your speech and our justification for regulating, stifling, and censoring your speech is that your speech might actually exacerbate real terrorist threats here in the United States. So when you and I warned a couple years ago, listen, we shouldn't let the left redefine the word speech, it was actually much more dangerous because this is the outgrowth of it. They're defining us and our speech as actual terrorism. Liz... I can't see how this ends any other way than a Cheka here in America if we don't already have one. I mean, what's, what's stopping this? Are we supposed to believe that Republicans are going to stop this? Because this is taking us to a very dangerous place. I know you hear from communists all the time, people who've escaped communist com com uh, countries. I certainly have. They tell me, Jesse, it's happening here. Jesse, I escaped Cuba. It's happening here. Jesse, it's happening here. Why can Americans not see? Why can the GOP not see? Well, the Republican Party is largely compromised, as we know. There are some good apples in the Republican Party at the elected official level, but in large part, they, um, especially in the Senate, they're beholden to Mitch McConnell because Mitch McConnell operates the largest super PAC in the country dedicated to electing Republican senators. And if Republican senators dissent McConnell's narratives or McConnell's agenda, then he withholds money from them. And so they just kowtow and they fall in line with what McConnell wants. McConnell's wife, Elaine Chao, is largely compromised by the Chinese Communist Party. And I mean, this, it, it, it makes a scary sort of sense, right? This, this, what we're seeing from the Department of Homeland Security is very similar to what the Chinese Communist Party does to their people. It's how they um, enforce their closed society it's how they control information. It's how they control people's thoughts. It's how they control people's behavior. The best disinfectant in a country like ours, where we still have recourse, is to talk about this, is to let people know what is happening, is to show examples of the egregious overreach and abuse and demonstrate exactly where this will lead if we don't put a stop to it. In the last six months, Jesse, I feel like every week there's a different alphabet soup federal government agency that I'm calling to just, you know, abolish it. It's abolished the IRS, abolish the Department of Education, abolish the FBI. And now I think we need to consider abolishing the Department of Homeland Security because this is their mission to target quote unquote disinformation and misinformation because they equate our speech with actual terrorism, then they're not doing anything to keep us safe. They are actually they are actually 
an enemy of the people.